Hey, welcome back to The Woodcrafter. On today's show, we're going to do the usual channel update. We're going to look at the trend jig for making MFT tops, have a quick conversation about 3D printing and talk about a story stick. That sounds good. Stick around. Okay, so let's get straight into this and start talking about 3D printer. Yes, I've invested in a 3D printer. Now, why would a woodworker want a 3D printer, I hear you ask? Well, there's three reasons. The first reason is I want to start to create some marking things, some tools inside the workshop. Tools such as this story stick. Now, when I upgraded my fence on the MFT, and we did a video about that, I had spare one of these benchdogs.co.uk rulers and this has got a lovely one meter thousand millimeter incremental scale that's incredibly accurate so what i did over in fusion 360 was design these stops and I, and I printed out five of these on my printer so the top one is for the tenon that's going to go on top of the leg on the workbench design i'm going to do these second two are the first mortise to hold the tool shelf in place and these bottom two or the bottom mortise that's going to hold the bottom shelf in place. It's eventually will take a tool cabinet. And I've got four legs with mortises on two faces, so that's eight faces. So I thought I'd build this, I can set the positions I want, when the dimensions I want, and use this to quickly mark everything out, and everything will guarantee to be accurate. So I'll do a video about this and show it in use further down the line. But that was reason one why I wanted to get into 3D printing, so I could start to make some marking gear. Now the second thing I wanted to use 3D printing for was templates and jigs. And you remember that when we reviewed the new bandsaw that's in the workshop, I was talking about organic shapes in my designs. And what I want to be able to do is to print out those shapes in reasonably thick plastic that I can then use as a template as I route out those designs on the final pieces. So that was the second thing for it. Now when I build the new MFT table, it's not going to have the festool rail around the outside, but I still want to be able to attach things to the new workbench. And I want to attach things using the grid of 20mm holes, it will still be a feature of that new bench. So I want to be able to print out different jigs that I can then bolt onto the MFT and attach different things to for different reasons. And we'll look at those ideas in a future video, but that was the second sort of thing. Now the third area I wanted to get into was a little bit of prototyping. And here you can see I printed out a 3D model of the workbench that we're about to build. Now because I'm using Fusion 360 as my design tool of choice now, I can 3D print from Fusion 360. So every component on this is actually a replica of the components I'm going to build. Be it a leg, be it the vice chart, be it the stretchers, the bearers, the MFT tops, whatever it might be they are all designed in Fusion 360. So I simply printed all those components out at a one-tenth scale and assembled this in the same way I'd assemble the full-blown workbench. And it allows me to see whether the design works and it pretty much has. So I wanted to get into prototyping and apart from which it was just good for and I fancied doing it. So yeah, I've got into 3D printing which is really, really quite cool. Now talking about the workbench, yes, finally I'm about to start the workbench build. Now COVID has had a huge impact on my workflow and all the things I had planned. And that's pretty much because I couldn't get hold of the stock. My normal supplier is still shipping it, but it's a much slower delivery time and I've noticed that the costs have gone up in line probably with their costs, their overheads creeping up during the COVID crisis. And I finally found a supplier that does high quality construction grade timber slow grown pine pretty much not free with straight grain inside it ideal for a workbench so for about 300 pound i can now get all the material i need to build the workbench and that was a key consideration of that build to keep the cost down than a single mft so that's now on back order and that should be arriving in about two weeks and they want to crack on and get that workbench started now i've already done a pre-launch over on the website www.thewoodcrafter.com now it will be a website only project build and i'm doing it as a very detailed course it takes you all the way through looking initially at wood type wood selection the design features why i've approached it how i've designed it walking through the diagrams and then step by step building that thing up and it's going to give me the opportunity to go into quite a lot of detail about that build. I'm offering the course Early Bird 29 99 
and that gives you access to all the course material, to all the plans. You'll also get access to the Fusion 360 original RAW files if you so wish. And I'll also put in the 3D printing files if so you can print it out if you wish to as well. $29.99 is the early bird price. That will then revert to $49.99 when it goes live in two or three weeks time. So in order to make the 20 millimeter grids that I need on these MFTs, I needed some way of doing that. Now I did look at buying them ready-made CNC, but that wasn't gonna give me the size I wanted. I was also looking at the uh, path guide system and a lot of people have looked at that and I've seen people having great results, but I've also seen people having mixed results on that. So I've also had a look at this sort of jig and this is the Trend one, but other makes are available and no, I'm not sponsored by Trend in any way, shape or form. And this is an MFT jig. It's pretty heavy. You can see the sort of thing that we've got. It's basically a jig with 30 millimeters holes inside it. And what you do is you use a 30 millimeter bush that sits inside these holes and a 20 millimeter router bit and then that perfectly lines these things up. Comes with a number of these pegs and these pegs just slot into these holes here. And then you can use those pegs to align it to the corner of a square piece of MDF. And then you can go through and you can cut your first set of holes. You then use these supplied dogs, 30 millimeters on the outside, 20 millimeters on the inside. They simply drop into the holes like so that you've just made. And now you can go ahead and you can drill your second set of holes and then you just move forward and that's guaranteed to give you a 20 millimeter grid. Now this black material here that's going to be on top of my workbench is actually Velcromat and it's incredibly expensive when you compare it to MDF. So for a large sheet of Velcromat it's going to cost about £145 for one sheet whereas an MDF sheet is going to cost me about £34. But I just like the idea of that black top that's no more than that it is a bit denser than mdf and it's a bit stronger than mdf but i just think it looks pretty so i thought i would splash out and make it a pretty bench but because of that expense i don't want to rush in with this directly then find out it's not an accurate 20 millimeter grid and i can't find anything on youtube that puts it through its paces and then looks at the quality of the final product so guess what we're going to do so we're going to get a scrap piece of MDF and we're going to make an MFT top out of it and I'll do that as a YouTube feature video some point in the next month. And then I want to use the top that we've made to actually go back to our five square cut method that we've used many times to put the bench dogs stuff through its paces and see how accurate it is before I commit. If it's accurate, great, it will get a thumbs up, it will get a great positive review. If it's not accurate, I'll send it back to Trend and tell you, tell them that that wasn't very, very good and the reasons why. So watch out for that, I think that'd be really useful. If I'm interested, are these things accurate? I'm sure other people are as well. Okay, so let's look at the channel and see what's going on. We're now in May, back end of May 2020. Our mission continues to inspire, educate and support woodworkers of all levels and we've still got some goals set for 2020. We're still aiming for 15,000 subscribers and we're well on track for that goal. We were looking for 2.5 million minutes of videos watched and we passed that so we've reached another milestone so we're now tracking towards 3 million minutes of videos watched. And we were looking for 500 web subscribers over on the online school and we surpassed that as well, so we're now heading up to a thousand subscribers. I still want to get four deep dive website projects done. Um, I've not actually started that. The workbench one will be the first one out of the box, and that's obviously been delayed because of COVID virus and that problem of getting hold of stock that I spoke about. Um, I still want to write the season one of Beginner's Guide to Woodworking. And what I'm intending to do as I start to build up the workbench series, if there's something I want to discuss, then I'll break off and I'll create a dedicated module around that one. So I'll start to build it up as we move forward. So I'll be using the workbench and that season one in parallel with each other. The wooden gift store, I do want to move ahead with that, but I've taken it onto the back burner a little bit. It's not the right time, I think, to actually launch a retail store. And it's also allowed me to just revisit some of the thinking that I've got around that wooden gift store. So the website is there, it's live. Um, I've just put a holding place there for now. 
But I'm looking more at these Etsy stores or the Not On The High Street stores or the Amazon Makers store. So what I want to do is to start to think about CNC and that's something I've mentioned a few times. And with my newfound love and success on 3D printing, CNC is a logical extension. And I want to start to design a series of products that I can CNC create. So a combination between the 3D printer and the CNC should start to make those products. And if I can find a way of just allowing that to churn over and start to build up uh, a layer of stock, then I'll start to launch on these and just use the wooden gift store almost as an online catalog, but look for the revenue to come through from those three channels. So I'll keep an eye on that. And if I go down that road, we'll sort of talk about it a bit on YouTube because that's an interesting business venture. So just looking back on the month that was, it has been a busy month. I didn't do the things I wanted to do, but I did a lot of other things. But we did some Benchdog Square reviews. Uh, Ralph had two new products on the market. He had the, the Rail Square and he also had the new Mark II fence. So both of those we've reviewed. We've also struck a new deal with Benchdogs.co.uk and that gives you 5% discount. So if you want to buy anything from benchdogs.co.uk, just use the code the woodcrafter or one word at checkout and that's going to give you 5% off all of your purchases. So that's well worth having. Now I've also relaunched the website. The first version of the website was very, very much about the community. And I think a lot of the online courses and that content was getting lost. So I flipped it over. So now when you come onto the website, it's very, very typical. The Woodcrafter Inspire, Educate and Support is on here. And straight away you're into the courses. And I do intend to continue to build up the catalogue of courses. I've also created a new course bundle over there that I'm calling the YouTube bundle. So any YouTube video I've ever made or I'm currently making or I'm making in the future is now available as a course and it's grouped together logically. So if you want to understand how to go and set up and calibrate a planar thicknesser, go and look at the planar thicknesser course. If you want to look at the series that we did on the bandsaw and how to set that up, go look at the bandsaw course. So all that's gone into the new website and it's working really, really well. And certainly those YouTube bundles seem to be really well, um, well respected and well received. So I'm glad I did that. I've also completed the mobile base and that video will be coming out next week. This was an upgrade to the mobile base I had on my plane, the jointer. The factory bought one just wasn't working for me, so I built a new one out of oak. So I've also done the pre-launch now of the workbench course over there. And as I've said before, I've got heavily involved in 3D printing, which was a hell of a learning curve for me. Looking at next month, next Tuesday, the mobile base video will be coming out, and that'll be followed very quickly by something I'm calling the Bench Dogs Kennel. I've got a good collection of bench dogs now, from standard dogs to quad dogs to fence dogs to rail dogs. And they're just sitting in a box and they get banged together and I don't really like that. So I'm going to build a wall mounted home for those where the dogs can just simply slot in. They're always at hand and they're safe and protected. So that will come out the following Tuesday. Now this box here in the corner, this brown box you can see just in video, that's a new bobbin sander from Axminster. So we'll do an unboxing and a review of the bobbin sander. Not very complicated too, so it'll just be a one episode. But we look at why I bought that and what that's about. I want to talk about the storage stick in more detail and um, by that time I should have the timber in the shop for the bench and I'll put this through its paces and show why I built it and if there's any interest in these 3D components we'll gauge that at the time and I might make the, um, the printing files available for that if people want to create their own and then we'll be back into the monthly vlog. So Friday is going to be the regular launch day for new content onto the website. Say I'm a bit behind, but I'll get back on track with that. So Friday the 5th, the early bird deal will close on the um, workbench series. That will go back to its 49.99 standard price. On the 12th, we'll get the first video out and then we'll start to work through that course. On the 13th, Saturday the 13th, I'll be launching that onto YouTube as well. So I'll take the same introduction video, I'll launch it onto YouTube so you can see what you're going to get for your money and what that's about. So that's what I've got planned for July. Channel continues to thrive and I'm really quite excited this month. Hits a few milestones that I didn't expect to hit so quickly, which is fantastic. So in terms of watch times, we're now at 2.7 million minutes of YouTube videos watched around the world. And I'm always staggered by those numbers. So the target for the end of the year was 2.5 million. So we've surpassed that in May. So we're now going to set a new target of 3 million and we'll see how we get on with that new target. 
subscribers. We've passed the 10,000 subscriber mark and thank you for everybody who stuck with me and supported me and encouraged me and even the people who hated it and disliked things. So thank you all. It's been all a great journey, fantastic mix over the last year and a half. So to reach 10,000 so quickly in a woodworking channel, I'm really, really quite proud of. 10,280, so I'm upping our target and we're going to aim for 15,000 by the end of December. Website membership continues to grow. We're now on 1795 website members. Our target was 500, so we more than surpassed that. And we're now on target for our new revised target of 1,000. So there you go, everything is going really well. The channel's continuing to rise. You guys are still interactive. You seem to be enjoying what we're doing. So thank you so much for that. Great content coming up in July. I hope you're gonna find that useful. And don't forget, let me know in the comments what you think about 3D printing and if you want me to do a series on 3D printing for woodworkers. With that said, I'll see you next time on The Woodcrafter. Crafter.